Praise the name of the Lord. This is your friend, the Apostle Dr. Livingston of the Stay Harvest International Church. I'm so delighted to come to your house, come to your office, come to your home through this wonderful uh, broadcast. And I believe you've been waiting for this moment and I've been waiting too. You know, we believe God that uh, each time we uh, fellowship together, you at home, I'm right here in the studio, but uh, as we fellowship together, the anointing flows. And I know that you've been blessed with these messages, these power-packed messages that have been a blessing to many lives of people all over the world. And we thank God for you for following us because City Harvest International Church is uh, a life-giving ministry. Uh, it is uh, a ministry that God has raised in such a season to touch many lives of people uh, worldwide. And we have ministry in many nations of the world, in Kenya, in Tanzania, in Botswana, in China, we've been doing a lot of ministry and trainings in Australia, in the United States of America. Um, people are following us from all over, all over the world. Uh, sons and daughters in Switzerland, in, uh, in uh, Sweden, uh, in Iceland, German, you know, um, um, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and many parts of the world, many people are following us. So we thank you for joining us. And I want you to call somebody else, invite somebody else. There was a certain person who was to kill herself. But when she had this preaching sent to her by a friend, she got delivered, she changed mind, and she said, I'm gonna look for this man. And she looked for me, and we prayed together, and she's doing very well. So. I share this broadcast with some other people and uh, your life will receive a double blessing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Now, so let us pray as I take you into the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that as I share the message of the kingdom with your children, I pray that let there be a divine connection, let there be a divine intervention, let there be healing, let there be deliverance, let there be freedom, let there be miracles, signs, and wonders. Let their hearts be healed, those who are wounded. Let their spirits be equipped, and let their bodies be healed. And as uh, we continue, manifest your glory in this message. And let the message be uh, accompanied with power that will bring a change in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Amen. Uh, I want us to open our Bibles in the book of uh, Genesis chapter number 12. And we are looking at verse number 10 through verse number us through verse number 20. We're going to do a lot of verses here, but I believe uh, when you get the foundation of the word of God, all the other things will be settled in the name of Jesus. This is what the Bible says in uh, Genesis chapter number 12 and verse number 10 to 20. The Bible says, now there was famine in the land and Abram went down into Egypt to live temporarily. You know, he went there to live temporarily. He went there to live for a short time. For the famine in the land was oppressive, intense, and grievous. Oppressive, intense, and grievous. When he was about to enter into Egypt, he said to Salah, his wife, 
I know that you are beautiful to behold. So when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. And they will kill me. But they will let you live. So I beg of you that you are my, say, I beg of you that you are my sister. So that it may go well with me for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. Verse number 14. And when Abraham came into Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. The princes of Pharaoh also saw her and commanded her to Pharaoh. Commanded her to Pharaoh. She was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he treated Abraham well for her sake. He acquired sheep, oxen, he donkeys, many servants, many servants, she donkeys, and camels. But the Lord scourged the fellow. <laughs> And his household with the serious plagues because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. You know, the Lord scourged the fellow. The Lord punished fellow. The Lord judged fellow for Abraham's wife. And the fellow called Abraham. And he said, what is this that you have done to me? Why did you not tell me the, that she was your wife? Why did you say she's my sister so that I took her to be my wife? Now, then, here is your wife. Take her and get away from here. And the Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. And they brought him on his way with his wife and all that he had. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been looking at uh, divine justice. The other day, we looked at divine justice, the other Sunday, and then the other, uh, the Sunday that followed, we looked at uh, economical justice and judgment. And that the Lord is leading me to talk about a very sensitive uh, issue, which is. Uh, uh, Marital justice. Marital justice. The only problem that we have in this season is uh, uh, broken homes. That is the major problem that we have in this generation. I remember those days while we were still young kids, when we were growing, there was respect in marriage. People married for respect. These days, people marry for money. Those years when we were growing up, people worked for honor. These days, people work for money. In fact, a doctor who charges <laughs> too much money is the one they call a good doctor. He's a good doctor because he's charging too much money. People no longer work for honor and respect. They work for money. And many people get into marriage with uh, uh, bad intentions, bad motives. They're not looking at the essence of marriage. They are getting in there because they are after something. And when they do not get it, the marriage is no longer there. They run away. And now we get a challenge that the homes are broken. And when the home is broken, even the church will get a lot of problem, even the nation. Because it is the home that builds the church. And it is the church that builds the community. And it is the community that builds the nation. And it is the nation that builds the continent. 
and it is the continent that builds the globe. And it is the globe that builds the generation. And it is the generation that builds the next generation. And so, if the family is broken, if the home is broken, then we're going to have a mess. We'll be messed up everywhere. The nation will be in a mess. Businesses will be in a mess. Ministries will be in a mess. And that is why we need marital justice. Ladies and gentlemen, I've met people, I've met many people that are crying. Oh, my husband left me here. Oh, my wife, after I did everything for her, she left me here. Oh, I educated this girl. Uh, 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 we, were, we were in a relationship and we were planning for marriage. And after I paid all the tuition and she graduated, she said, I do not deserve to be her husband. Oh, I took this lady uh, in China for business. Or I took this man in America uh, and I did everything. And then when he got there, he changed. Oh, I got married when I was still young to this man. We grew up together. And now when he saw me getting old, he left me and got another one. Oh, a lot of cases, a lot of issues. I will never forget a certain man in the United States of America in Dallas, you know, a, a young a lady, they got married in Africa in the village. And the lady got opportunity to get to the United States of America. And when she went there, she started, she became a, a, a doctor. And then she had to send for her husband to come to the United States of America. And the, the husband came, she had to work on the visa, she had to put, her, put him in school, you know, paid, and he also became a doctor. I was there even on the day of graduation. Just three months later, three months later, this man, this wicked man, wicked, left this woman and went for another lady. You know, so the things, uh, God is not happy with such things. And that is why God is going to bring a, uh, a marital justice. You cannot be used, misused, abused, and dumped. God is not, God is a family man. God is a family man. And that is why we call him father. He's our father. He's a family man. And so most of the people are going through uh, challenges of life, financial challenges, financial failures. They are operating under curses simply because there is an issue they have to settle. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the most sensitive uh, summaries I've ever preached and I do preach, but it has been a blessing to many families because the Lord spoke to me and he told me he's going to heal families, he's going to heal marriages, he's going to heal relationships. You know, in this season of the COVID-19 challenge, many families, many homes are broken. Many homes are broken. There has been a lot of fighting, a lot of challenges, a lot of quarrels at home. And the Lord just spoke to me and he told me, it's going to bring the healing. It's going to heal relationships. It's going to heal marriages. It's going to uh, put together, bind together, bring together broken homes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I want to show you a few things and then we're going to pray. And he thinks, I want you to follow me very sensitively because I'm not going even to rush. I'm going to go slow because when you get this truth, when you get this truth, I tell you, you're going to live a good life and you enjoy your family, you enjoy your relationship, you enjoy ministry, and you will be a star in your generation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God. Now, the third thing that happen is in marriages and uh, mostly on the foundation of marriages that can make the marriage uh, a third world war, or can make the marriage hell on earth. And that's why many people even fear to enter into marriage uh, simply because they know of some uncle or some auntie that got married 
and he's been going through challenges. And he said, no, 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 I better stay alone. I better stay alone. There are some people uh, who even made up their mind that they will never get married. <laughs> they said, no, 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 no. If marriage is like that, I'll never, ever get into marriage. And so the younger ladies, they're making some money and they're building houses to stay alone. And that is not the plan of God. The Bible says it is not good for someone to stay alone. But some of you, I do not blame you. It's because of what you went through uh, or what you, uh, you saw uh, your parents or your dad doing to your, to your mama or your mama doing to your dad. And you say, if marriage is like this, then I don't want to get married. Listen to me, parents. You got to be very careful because your children may not listen to what you say. You may say, and they do not fall. But they are so impacted by what you do. So you, father, what you are doing to your wife is what your son is going to do to his wife. You mama, what you are doing to, to the husband is what your daughters are going to do to their husbands. And so whatever you are doing right now, you are laying a foundation. You are laying a foundation for your children and even for the next generation. So you've got to be very careful for whatever you are doing right now. It is a foundation. You're laying a foundation for your children, a foundation for your grandchildren, and a foundation for generations to come. So you've got to be very careful. Let me show you a few things here that I've put down so that you understand very well and then I'm going to pray with you in the mighty name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Remember, we are talking about marital justice. Now, there, is, there are 15 things that the enemy uses to frustrate, to confuse, and to destroy marriages and to destroy homes. Number one, it is called architect of conflict. The enemy will put, will draw a plan like as you do a plan of a house. And in this plan, the enemy has planted ways of conflict so that you'll be fighting all the time. You'll be fighting or even over, over the collagen or, or, or the, the toothpaste. You'll be fighting even over the toothbrush. The enemy has made a plan to make you fight. You fight over everything. You fight in the morning, you fight in the afternoon, you fight in the night, you fight in the bed. Everything, every time is fighting because the, re the enemy has prepared a, 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 a conflict, has planted conflict in the home. You find sometimes people are fighting without cause. What is making them fight is nothing. Somebody will just get on onto the phone and get somebody's phone. And when he tried to take the phone away, a fight begins from there. Many people are fighting because of phone, because of messages. You know, the enemy has made what you call the architecture of conflict in homes. And that is why we have many broken homes. But as I speak right now, the Lord spoke to me that is going to bring marital uh, justice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Number two, it is marriage evil designers. Marriage evil designers. You know what the enemy does? If we seize the potential that is inside of you, and I just tried to fight you, and I can't get you, what the enemy is going to do is to design somebody design somebody that is going to make you weak. I will never forget this. I will never forget this. A man of God, a great man of God, he was so powerful. Many people tried to make him fail, but he could not. The devil tried to make him fail, fall into sin, and he refused. He was so powerful. He was so anointed, and he loved the Lord. He was so committed, holy, holy, 
moving into the, the righteousness and the ways of God. And now guess what? The enemy just designed somebody and brought a lady into his life. After marriage, after the wedding, this was the, the, the end of the anointing of this brother. And as I speak right now, it's normal. You know, why? The enemy designed. He said, this one is powerful. Let me design somebody who is going to confuse him and totally bring him down. Destroy his ministry. Destroy his, his life. Confuse his destiny. But it is not going to happen to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. So we have people that are not meant to be, but with God, nothing shall be impossible. We're going to pray and whatever was a mess, it is going to become a message. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Whatever was a confusion, it is going to become a testimony. Because the Lord is going to mend the broken uh, the broken pieces. God is going to bring together the broken pieces of your heart and bring peace. God is a master planner. Even if the devil meant it for bad, the Lord is going to manipulate it and make it for good in the mighty name of Jesus. But you would have learned a lesson out of that. And that is why I advise all the younger men and the younger ladies who are not yet married. Do not just rush into it. Take your time because it is better you delay when you get the rightful person than rushing into things that are going to bring a wrong person in your life and you'll be frustrated all the time. Many people are struggling and suffering because the enemy designed them badly. The enemy connected. The enemy brought a wrong connection, a diabetes connection. So you are connected wrongly. You connected to the, to the wrong person. You are the right person connecting a wrong person. And like you are like anti-clockwise, east and west, north and south. You can't match. You can't go together because the enemy designed wrongly wanting to destroy your destiny. But thank God, the Lord spoke to me about the marital uh, justice uh, and God is going to bring things in order in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, the son of the living God. I want you also to understand that there is what we call uh, redrawing of marriage map. Redrawing of marriage map. The, the, the direction of the, the marriage is supposed to go this way or the map is supposed to be like this and the devil redraws it. He tries to change how it is supposed to be and bring a confusion in the marriage. That is very important and you got to understand that. And there is what we call household wickedness in marriage. That is why those days where we were growing, our parents, they used to go to the other parents of the girl. They could even send somebody. Batumanga yomuntu nano nyereza nakula research ku family. Obaba sezi, obaba bi, obaba balunji bati ya katonda. Nebate gira mpisa chi. What is the habits? What is the, the problem with that family, they could send somebody to research over the family. They could not just allow their daughter or their son to get married to somebody they do not understand, which is totally different from nowadays because these days we, we, we're on social media, you're, lo you're looking at a girl uh, or a young man, so handsome in a photo or so beautiful in a photo and then you connect and then the relationship begins from there and then you become a family. Long days, that, that's why their marriages of the early age, I mean, of the late, the, the, uh, the former days, their marriages were strong. A mama could not leave a papa. They could stay there for years, even when they faced challenges and problems, they could stay. Why? The enemy 
They did not have opportunity. These people took time to understand and to know the foundation of this family. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some families with wicked, you know, principalities. They are principalities. Some families, uh, they, they can't stay in marriage. The grandma did not stay. Mama did not stay. Others, they have even some funny, funny habits. People knows how to hide their problems and their weaknesses. Somebody can hide his weakness for years. I will never forget in Tanzania, this man of God, he marries a lady who had three children. Three children. But she hid the children. And the man knew that this woman has no child. And they stayed together for 35 years without the man <laughs> recognizing and discovering the secret of the woman. Three children. And they stayed together for 35 years. They got other three children. After 35 years is when the man discovered that the woman had other three children. So they come to my office for counseling. The man is over 60 years. <laughs> the woman is about 58 years. And now the man says, I can't stay with this woman. This woman is wicked. This woman is a killer. This woman wants to kill me. She can kill me. How can she hide all the 35 years? How can she hide from me? You know? So people can hide their weaknesses even for years. So you cannot just look at somebody and understand uh, uh, what, what it is. You know, oh, I'm still researching about you. It is not easy, but we need God now. We need God's justice in this. It is only God that can give the rightful connection because it's the right connector. And I pray for you that the Lord will give you the rightful person in life. And even if you're already together and you are in a mess, God is going to mend that marriage. In the mighty name of Jesus, there is somebody who is divorced. You were false accused and you are divorced falsely. You need marital justice in the mighty name of Jesus. There is somebody you've been together for many years and you need the blessing of God in that family. You've been praying together, loving to loving one another, growing up together and you have never experienced the blessing of the Lord. I decree and declare that the Lord will give you justice and he's gonna bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I don't know whom I came to talk to her, but I know there is somebody that has been believing God for marriage. You've been believing God for a husband. You've been believing God for a wife. The anointing is right there. It's right here. It's gonna hit you in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Lord is gonna give you justice. I feel the anointing. I feel the Lord is mending relationships. Relationships are getting healed. Marriage are getting healed. Broken homes are coming back together. There is reconciliation. The anointing of reconciliation is just hitting you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I see a spirit of unforgiveness because of what you went through. Because of what he did to you, you feel you can't forgive. The Lord is saying when you forgive, you're going to release the blessing of he or the blessing of God upon your life. Listen to me. It is so embarrassing and so bad when you trust somebody with all your heart when he doesn't love you. Some of you, the people you love, they don't love you. You love them and for them, they don't love you. You are the one always calling. You are the one always sending messages. And the guy do not even reply. The one you don't love. And the one who love you. The one you love, it doesn't love you. <laughs> there, is a, there is a problem there. And we're going to pray about that. 
Have you ever been in a, a situation you love somebody? You, you, you feel you possessed with somebody. You are obsessed with somebody. But it's not on you. Go malo would the no kuba masim no sinikabu message. Hi, sweetheart, honey, nainga yeta dam. You love him, but he doesn't love you. That is a very big challenge. We're gonna pray about that. And the Lord is going to help you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. There are people that are watching right now. You're watching right now. You are over 40 years. You have never gotten marriage. In fact, I'm seeing this woman, this woman. The name is Juliet. Yes, Juliet. You're watching right now. Over 40 years. Never gotten married. You don't have a kid. You're not married. The people, the men just come to use you. And then they dump you. You're watching. I want you to call me. The numbers are right on your screen. I want you to call me. There is something there. There is an issue we have to settle. There is a case we have to settle in the spiritual realm, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I'm looking at somebody. You are watching this program right now. You're watching right now. The men that come to you, a lady, the men that come to you, all of them are married. It is only married men that pick interest in you. There is a problem. There is a problem there that we got to deal with. You are a young boy, but you are always interested in all the women. You are young, but you are interested. You pick interest in all the women. There is a problem there that we got to deal with. You are a young girl, but the men that come to you are old. I met a lady in Ghana. I met a lady in Ghana. She was 23 years old. And she told me, man of God, they call me Papa. I say, Papa, the youngest man who has ever come to me was 60 years old. She's 23, but the youngest who came to her picking interest for marriage was 60 years old. No, there must be justice. There must be marital justice right there. You are young. 60 years, 23, and that is the youngest who, who came to her, which means others were 70, others were 65, you know, coming to a young girl of 20, 20, 23 years old. There must be justice. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I feel an anointing in here. There are people that God is vindicating. There are people that God is helping right now. In the name of Jesus. I see our time is like uh, going. And I need to take some time to pray for you. Because I feel, <laughs> I feel there is something which went wrong. There is something that we got to settle. There is something that you have to put in order. Just imagine, the, all the men that come to you are poor. All the men that come to you <laughs> picking interest in you are poor. And you are the one who, who is supporting them. And when you support them to a certain extent, they leave you and they go find others. There is something that we have to deal with there. There is something that we got to pray about. Can you imagine? Young lady, beautiful the way you are. Beautiful the way you are. A certain lady came to me and told me, Pastor, look at me. Look at me. Is there anything missing? I told her, I don't know. I don't know whether there is something missing. I don't know. But uh, you're beautiful. And she told me, pray. Uh, nobody has ever picked interest to marry me. They just want to use me. They use your beauty. They were using her beauty for their benefits. No, 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 no. Something is wrong. And we got to pray about it. We got to pray about this. You can't be beautiful and frustrated. You can't be good for nothing. Your beauty can't help you. Your money can't help you. You're coming from a good family. 
You good in character. There is a woman you are watching this broadcast right now. You have children. You have girl children. You have them. But I can't get married. They are giving birth at home. There is something there that you have to deal with. You need justice. There must be justice. Your children must, your daughters must get married. How, how can they be giving birth at home? There is somebody watching. I don't know. But, but, but I feel the Lord is healing many lives right now. Many, many families right now. Just imagine. You're just giving birth at home. There is somebody watching right now. Every child has a father. And you're not married. Three children, each child with a father. And you're not married. You're like that woman. The Samaritan woman. Five men and the one she has is not the husband. Three children, each child has a father. I'm not condemning you. No, no, no. But we got to pray. There is something wrong that we got to settle. God must bring justice. God must help. You must enjoy marriage. Yes, you must enjoy your husband. Enjoy your wife. Marriage should be enjoyable. Marriage is not a battle. A third world war. It must be enjoyable. That is why God saw it is not good for man to live alone. He brought a wife. And when Eve came to Adam, the Bible says, Adam was happy. And he said, this is the, the bone of my bones. And he, he even named her. Have you ever named your wife with any name? A beautiful name. Have you ever named your husband with a name? How do you call him? You call him Chigaji? You call him the devil? You call him that idiot? What do you call him? Adam named his wife. You can name him. You can name her any name. You can call her any name. <laughs> you can call her the greatest. You can call her the king of kings. You can call her, you can call, you can, I mean, you can call, call him the king of kings. You can call him Obama. You can call him Osama. You can call him Trump. You can call him any name because he's your husband. Salah called him master. You can call your wife any good name. You can call him sweetheart. You can call him Mountain Dew. Can call, I mean, you can call her mountain Kilimanjaro. You can call her any name. Yes. You can call her your strength. I call my wife my strength. Yes, she's my strength. If it, 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 the Lord uses her to encourage me, you can call her any name. I want you to create a name for your woman. That when she hear that name, uh, she, she'll be happy. In Tanzania, they have many names. They call Kisula. Wa Tanzania, muna tufatilia. Hata hapa, kuna wengi muku kwenye broadcast, muna tufatilia. Eh? Kisula, Murembo, Murimbwende, Kipusha, Malikia, Malaika, eh? Muzuri. You can call, you can call her any name. Oh my God. I see my time is over and I got to come out of here. If you are believing God for marital justice, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are saying there must be marital justice. And I don't know why, but it is uh, uh, strongly in my spirit that today God has healed relationships and marriages and homes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Why can't you lift up your hands and I bless you? I bless you. I bless your relationship. I bless your marriage. I bless your home. I bless everything you do. I bless your endeavors. You're going to be relevant in everything you do. The blessing of the Almighty God will rest upon you. The everlasting masses of God will be upon you. 
will speak good, will speak peace and victory. I silence every evil voice. I confuse every evil design of the devil in the name of Jesus. I bless you. I bless your steps. Every step you're going to take it from today is blessed. I bless your Monday. I bless your Tuesday. I bless your Wednesday. I bless your Thursday. I bless your Friday. I bless your Saturday. And I bless your Sunday. I bless every day in this month. It is going to yield a blessing and increase. This year is going to produce whatever you believed God for at the beginning of the year. And you shall live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This is your friend, Apostle Dr. Livingston.